the Art and Industry of Business and Living podcast, discussing conscious choices around business, money, life and living and creating a greater future for you and the planet. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Art and Industry of Business and Living. And I am your host, Simone Melissas, and I'm still at home. It's like surprise, surprise. I've uh, been doing a couple of podcasts from home and I actually just went for a run this morning and I was like, it's time to leave. It's time to get out. So I'm actually off to China. So how does it get any better than that? As one does. Time to travel. Let's go to China. <laughs> so I have a dear friend of mine who actually used to live next door to me. And I think of you often, actually, Diva with the you yeah. living next door so welcome Diva. <laughs> thank you so much it's great to be here you know we used to have this uh well our verandas you could talk to each other from the veranda and I often tell the story about Skype veranda because if you have ever used Skype <laughs> it's like how often are you on Skype and you Skype and then you just walk away you don't tell someone oh I'm about to go do this or I'm leaving now you just walk away and that's what our veranda was like we'd be chatting <laughs> to each other and we'd just walk away <laughs> I know. But, but what that actually brings me to is is the type of amazing being that I would say you are, Diva. Because it's been labelled as like X Men, and I I remember you taught me how to talk to you and how to deal with you, and I taught you how to deal with people who don't know how to deal with X Men. <laughs> That's so true. Oh my goodness, that feels like lifetimes ago. It does. But I was so grateful because I went, oh, that's what X-Men do. It's like, because you would never finish your sentence or you'd say something or you'd jump from, you know, you don't go A, B, C, you'd go from, you know, A to a number to yeah. something else. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> hang on a second. And it's like, or you'd send pictures or, you know, whatever that is. Yeah. So let's, because that's what I want to talk to you about today is you travel around the world doing many things. You're in Peru at the moment. I am. You just told me. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> And you do X-Men classes is one of the things that you do. So tell us a little bit about what is an X-Men. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's, um, you know, to me, X-Men are the people who, I mean, some of them have been labeled with anything from OCD to ADHD and autism. And actually, many, many, many of them haven't been labeled. But it's exactly what you're, what you're saying, Simone. It's, you know, the people who have a very different way of thinking that isn't linear, isn't logical, isn't maybe rational, but it can be incredibly creative if you're actually harnessing those abilities and using them to create something. Um, so to me, it's it's just so fun and there's so many things to be explored. I remember years ago in Western Australia, so a state in Australia, and they said one in three kids were diagnosed with ADHD but what they were doing is giving them uh, medication for it. Yeah. I was like, that's instead of actually looking at what their capacities are. So can you talk a little bit about the difference of that, of diagnosing someone? I mean, if we look at the movie or the movies, X-Men, it's yeah. like, you know, I remember there's one scene where the parents go, can't you take this away from him? And he's like, they're like, no, this is a capacity, yeah. not something you're going to take away. Exactly. And it really is exactly that what you're saying. It's actually just a different way of being in the world. So it's like if somebody looks at the color blue and they see blue, to somebody else that might look like green. But how do you know unless you're asking the person? So I think what we're so taught to do in society is just assume that everybody is like us or everybody should be the same, you know, at least to a certain degree. And the X-Men, they're not like that. Like they they literally function from a very different perspective. Um, so if you're seeing something one way, it doesn't mean that they're going to be seeing it the same way. And it's, you know, exactly what you're saying with ADD and ADHD. I've met many, many entrepreneurs around the world. A lot of them are very good friends of mine who probably, if they were in school nowadays, would be diagnosed with one of those things. Um, but they've actually been using it as a way to have access to tons of energy. And you think, you know, that hyperactive element to their advantage, um, even things like, you know, being distracted by so many different objects, like you mentioned before, kind of like you start a sentence, you don't finish it, you jump to the next one. If you're trying to be like everyone else, then of course you're going to seem probably a little weird. <laughs> but the moment that you realize, oh, I can actually have my attention on 20 things, and you start asking questions like, how can I actually use this to create something? 
um, you might just end up being a very talented multitasker. <laughs> You know, yeah, and I think we've all got a bit of it in us. I mean, I remember years and years and years ago with an ex-boyfriend because I chose lovely men at that stage in my life, just you know, <laughs> who judged me and my body continuously. And I remember we had a business together. Not a smart choice, but anyway, been there, done that. And he used to say to me, "You need to finish one thing and start another. You're you're all over the place. Like you've got working on twenty different things, but you need to finish something." And of course, what did I do? Because I thought he knows way more than me. He's the love of my life. You know, he must yeah. be right. I must be wrong. I did all of that. You know, <laughs> humanoid judging myself, and it was so hard. I'd go, "Oh, okay, he's right. I must finish one thing and then do another." And it yeah. was interesting when we split up. He said to me, "You'll never be able to do this business." Like you'll never be able to do it without me. And then I looked at it and went, hang on a second, I'm the one that's doing all this stuff. And I went back to creating that way of doing 20 things at once. And it's so much more me. Yeah. And one of the tools I remember hearing, and I say this to my son now, is, you know, when you do your homework, put your TV on, put your, you know, your radio on. It's like, listen to YouTube, do whatever you want, have as many things going at once. So can you talk a little bit about that that and how X-Men create with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was having a conversation with somebody here last night, actually, and they were they were telling me about their nephew who um, has autism and just how like certain things, you know, freak him out. And what I was explaining to her is that the intensity of um, the way that X-Men receive information is crazy. It's huge compared to, say, your average person. So if you and I are talking and we're, you know, hearing something on a scale of one to 100 say volume wise we might hear it volume 10 somebody who's an x-men might hear it volume 100 and that's not something they can switch off so the world for them is such an intense place which is why that thing that you were saying like hey like can't we just take this away from them (laughs) like in the x-men movies doesn't really work it's like if you have like you know this amazing ability to hear everything and perceive everything intensely what you want to do is actually start using that and i love that example that you gave as well of you know <laughs> telling your son to put on the tv and the radio because what what we're taught is to do exactly what your your ex was saying like focus on one thing finish that and then that gives you a sense of achievement and then you can do the next thing but that doesn't really work for x men so it really is often a case of do the opposite of what you think would work. And when you do add a lot of noise and different stimulus, what happens is that ends up becoming kind of like a background noise to them so that the everyday things that are around them, like they stop being so loud in some ways. And then they actually start to have a sense of them and their own space and where they're headed, even their own thoughts and their own creative ideas. And that starts to be a lot easier because otherwise the world is an incredibly loud place for an X-Men. God, you're just describing <laughs> so much of of what I get is projected at people that is the wrongness of them as well, Yeah, which is such a crying shame. I mean, as I'm listening to this, and I don't know how to ask this question, Diva, but I would like the listeners to get the differentiation of not like you're either an X-Man or you're not, because I don't get that that is. I get no. that there's different extremes. I mean, I, I get there's so many pieces, parts of pieces where I am but I'm not as much as others. So how do you sort of start to look at, okay, so, you know, is this me and what are the signs for that? I mean, to me, it's in some ways like business, you know, like you kind of put stuff out and you go, hey, are you interested in business the way that you do? And the people that are interested will come along and then suddenly people start realizing that their life is their business and then it opens up this huge thing and other people start recognizing it. To me, that's really what this body of work with access is about it's like we all have these capacities it's like saying oh this is a person and then expecting that that's going to look one certain way (laughs) you know it doesn't really work it's all completely different (laughs) (laughs) exactly and um in many cases it's not even looking to see am i an x-men am i not an x-men i would say the exploration is more how am i perceiving this how am i receiving this information and beginning to ask yourself those questions because again even saying x-men in itself is a label you know we're just saying that to kind of give people a direction in which they can go Mm -hmm. and find the information but really it's actually about exploring how each person functions individually rather than trying to make everybody the same. Um, And that to me, I mean, that's been an amazing gift with access consciousness, like all the questions I would never have considered that I think 
in pictures or that I'm incredibly um, aware of energy and you know people's moods and what's going on in their world I unless I had to ask those questions so when I started to I realized oh this is the way that I am maybe other people are different too so it really starts to open you up to to recognizing the difference that we all are um and then you can call yourself an x-man or not or whatever you well, <laughs> yeah no I, no thank you for that that was absolutely beautifully said because i mean i'm just sitting in this room at the moment and i have a bunch of books in front of me and i'm looking at the books thinking okay so a book is created and then you're supposed to read the book you know word by word line by line you know start yeah. at the beginning and go to the end that's that's what the rules and regulations of this reality sort of say is what you're supposed to do but that's not how everyone reads no exactly it's like some people i mean i know a friend of mine you know he's he's great at reading backwards or he glances at a page and he downloads it and or some people like to go to the end of the book so what if if everything you looked at in life was a question and a question of, like you said, it's like, how do I perceive this or how do I receive this energy? So that you start to become aware that you are different and wh however you do it, it's not wrong. Yeah. And I love that you say that too about reading the book because I think even in asking that question, like how would I read this book, we may think it's just about the book because we're taught, again, you know, to focus on that one thing. But if you allow that like kind of self-awareness to expand throughout your life, that might be the way you create you know, in your job, in your relationships, in the conversations you have with people, <laughs> you know, you might go right to the end or you might go backwards. You might go around in circles until you get to, to the point that you're meaning to talk about or address. And, and that's a huge gift when you recognize that because then you don't have to make yourself wrong because you're no longer comparing yourself to other people to see where you fit, where you don't fit. And all of that stuff. Yeah, It's like, even with uh, someone said to me the other day, Oh, have you been, uh, doing much Pilates because I started doing Pilates and I said no I haven't I got home and I started running because hmm. I wanted to run but it's like you know when you start doing something and then you're supposed to keep doing it it's like we're as a humanoid which is something that we talk about in access consciousness if you had two species a human and a humanoid the basis of it is a humanoid is the person who always judges himself and is always looking for what next and what else is possible and knowing that there's more possible. And a human is the person who will always judge others, has a litany of judgment about others and pretty much functions from that place of, you know, you've got your life, then, you, you know, death and taxes are the only true thing rather than looking at beyond this reality. So if you're functioning from a humanoid, you like to change things up all the time, but it's so projected at you that it's a wrongness or you're not sticking to a routine. Or, I mean, I remember traveling and coming home after three years of traveling and everyone was like, well, now you've got that out of your system. You can settle down. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm 22. <laughs> it's like, this has just begun. So there was like so much more that was possible. So can you talk a little bit more about uh, creation? You mentioned that right at the beginning, and it's like creating from being an X-Man. What does that look like? Um, yeah. Oh, I, I just love the example that you gave. But it's true. It's so funny, just the projections that we have on us. And, and I mean, for me, X-Men are like, you know, they're like the humanoids that you're describing. They, they, they're kind of like, to me, they see the world through this lens of infinite possibilities. And then they walk out and they start doing things or talking to people and then all the projections come in and they're like, ah, I probably can't do this. But the beauty of, you know, the access tools is that as soon as I start asking, okay, like what's required here, where else can I go? You know, what can I institute? What can I create? What would I really desire to create in my life? The speed at which they can move is really astonishing because they don't have those parameters for like linear reality, which sounds a little bit kind of like, maybe weird <laughs> as a concept linear reality but you know that thing that you were saying where everything is like abc or you know go traveling then get it out of your system and then settle down you know all these things that we're supposed to do for an x-men it doesn't really exist in the same way because their brains and their minds don't function that way so they actually already have this kind of like creative advantage i would say to really be asking the questions that perhaps other people aren't asking in terms of business projects, the way they create their life, just because they're not standing from one fixed point of view, like a literal 
fixed point from which you are viewing things. <laughs> they are allowing themselves when they are, when they choose to, to have all of the points of view because they do have that kind of spherical awareness and that spherical way of receiving information. And that, when you actually start to recognize that that's how you function, you can create so dynamically. So I want to ask two questions. One, the first one is if someone's listening to this show and they're recognizing that they have these capacities and these qualities, because that's literally what they are. And say, let's use the workplace, for example, they have been judged, you know, for being fickle or, you know, not making up their mind or changing all the time or something like that. What's some of the first tools that they could start to use so that they're not going to the wrongness of them and not buying into that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. When you ask what are the first tools, I just get like thousands of <laughs> access tools in my so, mind. But you, get that download. Yeah. But you get that download of just like, ah, but it's like, so what's, if, if you got like one or two simple tools that they could like questions that they could ask, or even, I mean, it could just be the awareness that they, you know, you're not wrong. Yeah, exactly. And I would say the first thing to ask really is, is this my reality or someone else's? Um, because your reality isn't kind of like a fancy or com you know, kind of like a concept. It really is just the way that you function naturally as a person. <laughs> so when you're trying to do things the way that other people do them, it's never going to work out for you because you're not those other people. So that tool's really, really helped me a lot. I think, hey, am I functioning from someone else's reality or mine? Because I am typically, you know, exactly what you mentioned just now is kind of like the typical X-Men example. You kind of jump around all the place, you know, you get bored really quickly and it's very easy to go into that wrongness. And then the second thing is I really just remind myself of that other thing that you said too, which is what if I'm actually not as messed up as I think I am? And then in that you start to lose the significance and you can kind of have a bit of sense of humor about yourself, but you can also start to ask, okay, so what does actually work for me? And what do I, what do I desire to create here? Like, how can I do this different? Um, so I would say just as many questions as you can that kind of keep you in that state of curiosity about what it is that you desire to create and, you know, the things that you can put into action to head in that direction. And it's not going to look the way that you think it will. It never does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. And now the flip side, what I want to ask you is if you are in the workplace or even at home and you are listening to this and thinking, oh God, my son's like that, or my daughter's like that, or my colleague is like that. It's like, how can you empower them to be you know, the capacities that they have and also to receive the knowledge that they have. Cause that's the thing I really, I loved living next door to you with, you know, it's almost like I want to say hearing your head because it was, it, you know, it was all over the place, but it was brilliant. And recently uh, my nephew it was funny. He came and stayed with us for three days and Brendan, my enjoyable other said, Oh my God, I love this kid. He goes, his head reminds me of Divas. <laughs> 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 for three days it was hysterical so but it is it's like it's it's all over the place like you ask him a question and he'll he literally answered a question two days later and <laughs> like there was no time in between he just went well I think the funniest thing was when Tango did that and we were like what and it's like but he just come came out because he'd been looking at the question and didn't have an answer but when he did it just came out but there was literally like there was no time in between yeah so it was just like, all right, so not making him wrong for that. It was like, oh, cool, great answer, you know, or great awareness, like and in, in, in empowering him. So what are some of the things that you, as a parent or a colleague, you could be for people who are, you know, do have that level of autism or OCD or, you know, X-Men qualities and capacities? Yeah, I would say the main thing is really not to come to any conclusion about what they are or what they are not um, because, it's kind of like, you know, we've all been around people who are judging us or expecting the worst from us. And it's pretty intense, right? Like whether you think you're an X-Men or not, like it can be quite full on and hard to kind of be yourself. Now, if you imagine that amplified a thousand, it makes it very, very difficult for that child to actually be anything other than that thing that you're projecting at them. So the, the way to get out of those conclusions, which could be like, oh, again, you're probably not going to put your shoes on or again, you're probably going to have a fit right now, you know, <laughs> is to ask a question. Um, and you could ask the question to yourself, like, how does it get any better than this? Or one of my favorites is what is possible here that I haven't considered yet? 
um, because it's always the things that you haven't considered that will surprise you and create something brand new. Um, and again, just really empowering the kids by asking them questions. You know, we're so taught to kind of give them an answer and like, do this, do that. If you do this, this will happen. But that doesn't really do anything apart from give them the information that they're always going to need to come to you for awareness or to somebody else. So, I mean, my mom was brilliant at this. She would always ask me questions. Like I'd be, you know, kind of moaning about schoolwork. Like I don't want to do my science homework and hoping that she would like come in and save me. And she was so annoying because she never did. <laughs> she would just say, <laughs> she'd be like, cause you know, like my friends' moms would save them. So I'd like try the, the same tricks and um, <laughs> my mom would just, it didn't work. Me, no. <laughs> and she'd just look at me and go, well, I, unfortunately, I'm not the one that has to go into school tomorrow and face my science teacher. So if you don't do your work, like what's, what's that going to create basically? Like what are you going to have to handle tomorrow? And with those questions, as annoying as they were, it always gave me the awareness of the fact that every choice that I made had an outcome and would create something. You know, whether that was... Oh, you have no idea how much I needed to hear that right now. Oh. We're sending Nash back to boarding school tomorrow. And he's so funny. He keeps moping around the house and doing this, like, sad, depressed person. I I think he thinks that that's going to make us go, oh, no, why don't you stay at home? Where well, I'm like, can we send him today? Because he's, like, not being him at all. But I keep saying to him, dude, your choices will create your future and create your now. So what choice have you, are you just making right now? And exactly. I keep sort of trying to empower him with that. So I'm, I'm grateful that you just even spoke about that because it's damn hard being a parent as well sometimes. <laughs> oh, I know. I can't even imagine. I mean, but I, I love that you, you gave that example too because empowering someone doesn't mean like positive thinking or they're going to be jumping around super happy the whole time. Sometimes it's really annoying and sometimes it's really annoying to the kids and sometimes it can create outbursts and, you know, all of these things. But essentially it does, it creates this space where they now have that question for themselves. So when you leave, when you go away, when there's no one around, when they're in a dodgy situation or when they have to make a very quick decision, like they actually have that question and they will remember it, you know, cause that's, that's going to have been one of the things that empowered them to know that they had choice. And that to me really is the beginning of creating a whole different future for these kids, you know, so that they know how to be leaders and they're not waiting for people to give them instructions or looking for how to be like everybody else. They, they know that their awareness has value. Or save them as you were trying to get your mother to do. Exactly. <laughs> to save you. <laughs> so Diva, where can people find you? Name a couple of websites or places people can come find you. Sure. Well, the, Besides like in Peru in your hotel room right now. No, no. exactly. <laughs> um, well, the Access Consciousness website, accessconsciousness.com. Um, and also I'm on divadiaz.com, xmenabilities.com. And yeah. There's a few. And what classes do you have coming up uh, from May onwards? I think this is airing on the 1st of May. So. Oh, cool. Well, on the on the 19th of May, actually, I have um, a telecall called X-Men Creating the Future of Business, which I'm very much looking forward to. And then I've got some other classes dotted around the world that are live streamed and are online. And they're all about, you know, creating a life that inspires you so you can actually go out and create a change in the world and in yourself and have fun with it. Brilliant. Okay. Awesome. We'll make sure that we put that in the summary as well, sending out because, uh, I so strongly advise that you all attend someone, uh, you know, one of, uh, Diva's classes somewhere in the world. And if she's doing telecalls, then there is no excuse or justification because you can jump on because this is just a taste of what Diva can talk about. And any questions you have, you know, she can come up and give you some information that will empower you to look at something in a different way. So I am truly incredibly grateful for you, Diva. So thank you so much for joining me on here today. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> You're welcome. And if you guys like this podcast, please like it, send it to your friends, do all that sort of stuff. You can uh, go to the website, simonemelisses.com forward slash podcast and ask for the summary of this uh, call as well. Sign up for that. So thank you again for joining me, Diva. And I look forward to seeing you sometime soon. I'll be seeing you in Langkawi. I know. How exciting. <laughs> oh, a cocktail on the beach. It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so All right. Thanks, Diva. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.